Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about unconditional love and how it affects the body, the internal body. I'm Gary Parent, for those who do not know, and we're building a new studio now, so uh, I hope you find this pleasant to the eye. If you do, please comment and uh, like. So, unconditional love. Such an incredible thing. And when I think of unconditional love, I think of the Dalai Lama. Now, the Dalai Lama is one of the most incredible people because he loves everybody because he knows that everyone comes from unconditional or, or comes from one source energy. So we are all connected. So if you're sending out emotional energy that is negative or confrontational, it's going into the universal source where everyone is drawing energy from. So it just keeps repeating itself. So it's, it's really uh, quite a thing to watch him because he doesn't care what you say to him, he doesn't care what you think about him, nothing. And, and to me, that's extremely important because he doesn't carry other people's negative energy in his body. You can tell that he is just pure, pure love. Now, in life, it doesn't work quite that easy. <laughs> because we have conditional love, which I have moved away from a long time ago. But conditional love is, I will love you as long as you do what I want you to do. And if you don't, there will be hell to pay. That kind of love, although it feels like love, can steer you in directions that are crazy as far as the things that we will do to try to protect yourself or to fit in or to uh, go with a group or you know the, the whiplash from not doing what you're expected to do can be devastating especially from the ones that you love and you're expecting things back it's crazy it's crazy how out of balance it can be. When you watch the Dalai Lama, he's in complete balance all the time. That's where I prefer to be. And in situations, I have been pulled out of balance. It's time that we let that go. Because if you have conditional love, you are carrying negative energy in your body. And that negative energy projects out to you, trying to get you or manipulate you or convince you that you need to do what they want or there's going to be hell to pay. I don't play those games. And their opinion of me is none of my business. Just like the Dalai Lama. He doesn't care what you think of him. He loves you anyway, just like with me. I love people anyway, even if it separates us or it's confusing or what, whatever that is, I don't play those games anymore. Did I used to? Oh yeah, I was a big revenge guy. Uh, and you can't help half the world because you like what they're doing or, or, or you're, they're listening and expect the other half of the world to heal. It's not going to happen. So the only way we can help everybody is to do one thing. That's love everybody. Try to be compassionate and help everyone move forward. When people are, are negative, and I really hate to use this word, but it's a word I'm going to use, because it's what society believes. A predator. They have a vibrational frequency from an event or more than one event in their past where they were backed into a corner and they didn't know what else to do so they came out like a bobcat and they were ready to fight. Other people when they're put in these emotional stress situations tend to crumble, they lose their voice, they 
they hold themselves back. Well, those two energies are drawn to each other. That's what we have to be careful of. That's what we have to watch out for, is that we're not creating that energy in us, and they can see it, hear it, and feel it. That's what's so dangerous about it. So they're going to try and put their will upon you when really they should not have any power at all. So we have to be careful as we're moving through life and, and different ideas and different concepts come our way that we don't associate different ideas as not loving someone. They have a right to their opinion, we have a right to ours. So, also, if uh, you would put down where you're from, so that I can uh, connect with you later, I'll answer all your questions. It's been phenomenal doing these Facebook Lives. It's crazy. And I love doing them, so there'll be more coming. And if you have an idea for one, please put it up there, and we will address that. So, back to unconditional love is an emotional reaction. And how I want to get into this is, when you are pure love, and you have unconditional love, nothing anyone says will stick in your body. Where conditional love, if you feel like you've been wronged, or you're not getting the support you need, or whatever it is, because you have a different idea, and you are put into a corner, or you are uh, put in a situation where there's a lot of pressure on you, you don't need that pressure. You don't want that pressure. That pressure has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them and how they feel and the experiences that they gathered over their life. So the mind projects their fears with a predator or someone who's looking to get something from you, their mind is projecting from that fear because they didn't get that fulfillment when they were young. So it's really important to understand the difference in that duality, because that's what it is, it's a duality. And how do we learn that? Television, newspapers, movies, it's, it's all revenge and war and all these different things that emotionally push us to the side. And we don't, we don't need that. We don't want it. Shut the TV off. Be very selective on what you watch. Uh, watch a lot of healing videos. Uh, so that you start to unprogram yourself. They don't call television programming for nothing. Okay? So, as we're moving through life, and I've been on planet Earth here for a while, and I plan on sticking around because I have a lot to share. It's really important to understand where we're coming from, what information is coming to us. You know, when it, the big change for me, I was in an automobile accident in 1979, pronounced dead at the scene. I uh, crushed my whole right side. I was in a coma for four days. I lost some of my memory. And people used to say, so, what do you mean you lost some of your memory? What did you forget? I don't know. That's why they call it amnesia. <laughs> I really don't. I don't remember. <laughs> but I remember you, and that's what's important. So, as we're going through life, and this shift happened to me, when I came out of that coma, I was a completely different person. And I hope to hell that you guys don't go through the same thing to awaken. I think that's why I was sent back, to help people realize the triggers. You know, your, your circle of influence implanted triggers in you. And if you're detoxing, you know exactly what I mean. I mean exactly what I mean. Because as people that love you, they're saying, well, I don't want you to die. Well, I don't want you to do this. Well, and you have a reaction to that. I have zero reaction to that. I used to, but after my, uh, or during my 30-day cleanse, I could go sit with people, I could have beer and wings and 
all these different things and it didn't matter to me because I am on course, on a path, and their influence is not going to change the course of my life. And it's hard when people love you for you to do that. But it's extremely important that you do that. So, conditional love, you store those negative energies in your body. Stress in the shoulders. Anger in the liver. And most of that's coming because you can't let go of the fear that they put in you, the opinion that they gave you, the, the reaction is anger because you want to change, but you don't, you, you can't. You just feel like you can't. It's not that you can't, so you feel like you can't. That's not true. You can change. You can change whenever you want to. And grab your, your constitution, let's say, you're the very being that's inside you, grab that and run with it. Don't let anybody take that from you. Nobody can make you happy or sad, laugh or cry, run or stand paralyzed in fear without your permission. I don't do those things anymore. I used to, big time. Matter of fact, there was a while there when I was going to school and I couldn't read or write. And I had such a hard time in school that when I left, I would spend, until I couldn't stand anymore, running myself into the side of like brick buildings, trees, whatever it was, and till I just couldn't do it anymore. Like I, I just physically didn't have the energy to do it. Thank God that's over with. <laughs> and it is. I have no interest in confrontation. I have no interest in anything. And, and what happened in that accident was, all of a sudden, a third person popped up. So when people are speaking to me, it goes to this person, and it gets filtered, and then it comes to me with no emotion. What used to happen was it came directly to me with no emotion. I mean, with all emotion. Excuse me. Yeah, it came directly to me with every emotion you could imagine. I was more of a... Uh, knuckles and elbows kind of guy, not a love, compassion, doesn't matter who you are. If you need help, I'm going to help you. I might have said this earlier, but I'm going to say it again. You can't heal half the world and expect the other half to heal. So you can't be selective with who you help. And think of doctors at a hospital. What do they do? There, say the the Boston bombers, right? I believe they took one of those, because I don't watch the news, but I believe they took one of those that was still alive into the hospital, and the doctors had to help that person. Well, that is tough. But it's still their Hippocratic oath that they need to help everyone. They help murderers. They help... They, they just help so many people. Now... We have to do the same thing because that's what unconditional love is. Because if we don't help people who are listed, a.k.a. predators, if we don't help them heal and we just run over to the victim, the predator is still out there. And they need to heal too because there's an event in their life that pushed them to that. Just like with the people that are victims, there's an event in their life that pushed them to that, to be a victim. Helping both sides is the only solution that I know of, and it will stop them from connecting with other, uh, with other victims along the way, as long as they can heal themselves. So it's really important that uh, I just, hi Heidi. <laughs> so it's really important that we stay focused to who we are, you know, and, and through detox we cry a lot because there's emotional stuff coming all the time. Like I said, anger is in the liver, 
being pissed off is in the kidneys. Uh, financial issues is usually in the lower back. Uh, depression is in the lungs. That's why people are bent over and they have a hard time breathing. Okay, and it can be heart. You can be heart sick. When we are challenged, we react. That's a digestive, that's a gut issue, autonomic nerve. Brain shuts off, bam, you're either fighting or running. And you don't have a choice. That's just how your body's set up. Well, a lot of people who are predators and victims, they have the same thing running through them. They're just handling it in different ways because of the chemistry, right? So the digestive system, when you're in fight or flight, the digestive system shuts down, and so does the immune system. Now think about that for a minute. If your digestive system isn't working properly, and you're eating, and you're having digestive issues, and you get sick a lot, it's because all of your blood is out in your limbs for fight or flight, constantly looking around seeing who's going to attack you next. That is where a lot of digestive issues and immune issues come from. We're over acidic, we're constantly in the fight or flight stage. And to give you an example of that, if they do a kidney transplant, a heart transplant, a lung transplant, whatever, liver transplant, they chemically induce you with drugs that put you in fight or flight to purposely shut down your digestive system and your immune system because your immune system will see that as a foreign object and it will attack it and try and eliminate it from the body. That's how important fight or flight is and how important your digestive and immune system is. So once you start to move closer from conditional love to unconditional love everything will start to come into balance and you will be amazed at how much better you will feel it is crazy how much better your body will feel and your mind is at rest so it's really important to do these things and I can't express that enough because many of us are in situations that are horrifying and finding that peace within us to realize, okay, you have your opinion, but that also gives me the right to have my own. And I don't want to play this game. It's that simple. So I have to figure out how I'm going to get out of it, or I'm going to have to figure out how to shut down the emotional response I'm giving to that person or those people or that circle of influence. So. I hope you found this helpful. This is going to be a very short video. Uh, we have people working in the other room. I don't know if you can hear them or not. That's why I'm using this mic. I didn't really want to use it. But uh, I hope that you find a way to find your inner peace in a world of chaos. And the best thing, I haven't had a television in like 25 years. I don't read the newspaper. I don't really listen to the radio. If there's, if, as long as it's music, kind of okay, and there's, the music is getting more and more selective too. But if the news comes on, I don't care what it is, I'm either switching the station or shutting the radio off. Because there's nothing you can do for the people that they're talking about. They're in another state, they're around the world, wherever they are, there's nothing you can do but carry that energy that's being projected through that television, through that radio, through that newspaper. I have a 1937 newspaper, front page, four die in fire, woman raped, murder. This is 1937. It has never changed and is never going to change. And there isn't anything that you can do to help them. So please help yourself and learn to stand up inside yourself and be accountable for what you want. Because remember, if you take your dreams and pin them in somebody else's pocket, chances are 
they're going to run away with it. And you're going to be left with nothing. Time to take your dream, hold it, embrace it. Put it right in your heart, not in your head, in your heart. And move forward. And don't stop. If somebody says you're crazy, you know you're on the right path. Well, I used to go to people, my circle of influence, right? We were all broke. We were all, not that I'm any better off right now. But I feel better off. Because I have love for everyone. But it's crazy how we cling. We cling to things. And we hold them so close and they get stuck in our body. And through detoxification, because we're hydrated, in fact, I have a, something here. This is a sponge. And you can hear... This is dehydrated. And this is what your body is when it's dehydrated. So when you put just a little bit of water in this, it will start to hydrate. So you can see it's starting to get spongy, right? That's what sipping live liquids will do for you. Now, you can be too full also. So let's see what that looks like. So when you pick it up and there's water dripping out, that's too full. You want to keep your body at a nice, soft, squishable state where you have enough hydration so your body's not all stiff. You're not walking. And, and you, I see this all the time. It's very sad. Because the only thing that's missing is enzymes and electrolytes. But you see people walking like this. They can barely move. Their hips get stuck. And, and they can... It, it's sad because they're literally turning to stone. They're turning to that dehydrated sponge. And all they need is a little proper hydration, real salt, like Celtic or Himalayan salt. Sea salt is good also, but it's not as powerful as uh, Celtic and Himalayan salt, because it doesn't have the same amount of minerals in it. And the Master Cleanse, or coconut water, or, or anything, even a, uh, even a fermented drink, like kombucha. You can make that at home for like 10 cents for 32 ounces. It's crazy how how inexpensive it is to rehydrate your body properly. And it will help you get to unconditional love because it will open you up. And all these things that are stuck in you will start to bubble to the surface. And when they bubble to the surface you get to choose are they helping me? Or are they holding me back? And you can put them in a category and kick them to the side. Emotionally. You will never forget the memory. But emotionally, you can disconnect from it. And if you can get to somebody that does EFT, that is a quantum field, and you can tap. And what that does, it's like scratching a record. And when you scratch a record, it'll never play the same again. Same thing with EFT. We've been doing that for years. Matter of fact, we we're going to do an EFTN and freaking trauma now. But <laughs> we've moved on to other things, although we still do EFT. Uh, so I hope you found this helpful. And I'm so glad that I got to be here and do this with you. And we'll be doing more in the future. Please share, like, let me know where you're from, and we're starting our herbal company up again, where I'll do mixes of herbs specifically for you, for the issues you are experiencing. So, I love you all, I hope you have a fantastic night, you find that unconditional 
love in your body because it lives there. Because remember, we are all one source energy. The most powerful energy in the world. So have a fantastic night. And I will see you in the next video.